Money FM 89.3, best of weekends. Anil, welcome to Weekend Mornings. We're so happy to have you with us today. Morning, Glenn and Neil. Good to be back again. And it's great timing. Let's get straight into the award. Before we go into more details, can you tell us about the award that you've just uh, won? You've been featured across the world on BBC World, on various news agencies. You've become an international celebrity and thoroughly well-deserved. Tell us about the award you won and what you won it for. Yes, I can. The yes, award was a surprise, actually. I, I didn't even uh, expect it to happen, but it was really a pleasant surprise. But uh, I think more important, the team was more thrilled than me. Hmm. You know, everyone was thrilled and, and my kids were in fifth heaven. But I think I'm not the only one. There were so many other people who are doing so many. Some are just leading with, many of them are leading without titles. But uh, it just adds, but during this period, right, I think, I've seen the beautiful side of the Singaporeans coming forward. And that's the best gift that I had during this whole period. I was just thrilled getting it. And, and especially the team that was with me that made this possible. I wish it was just me, but it wasn't me. There are a lot of oak trees behind me that helped me to, to be part of this award, man. And, and not to be yeah. modest, we're talking about the President's Volunteerism and Philanthropy Award. It's not just any award. No, no, it's the President's <laughs> Award no. for Volunteerism yes. and Philanthropy 2020. For the benefit of our listeners and, and viewers, could you maybe give us a bit of detail what that was for? What did you do and your company do oh. to win that award? Okay, when COVID happened, it, it, it called us, it was unprecedented. Everyone was just caught confused. So uh, we had about a string of opportunities that we found we do. Uh, we got a call one day and an opportunity to help to set up the National Care Hotline. And I remember then we got the team forward and said, guys, we have an opportunity to serve the nation. And people are going to be calling and it's going to be disrupted. They're going to have issues and we really need to come together in a very short time. And I remember telling the team, it's a time to serve the nation. It's going to cost us long hours in the short span. And the team was really... Uh, very dedicated, came forward, and yes, and I think I saw the team coming together as a family in 10 days to set up the National Care Hotline to ensure psychologists and counsellors around the island, about almost five to 600, were all engaged uh, with the health of our clients. We got this rolling in 10 days. And the one thing that I remember telling the team, each call, it's not a transaction, it's a relational engagement Transaction is just you do something and you finish it, but everyone is coming an issue and they're not sure what to do. You just want someone to talk to. And that's when the whole family in Agape came together to make this happen. And then we, we had a lot of stranded foreign workers. Uh, we were uh, delivering lunch and dinner, almost about 300 meals were given. And at the same time as the team was supporting the National Care Hotline, uh, we, were, we were committed that we had the staff almost two over months providing their breakfast, their lunch and dinner in the office to ensure that they don't come in contact with anyone who may have COVID because we had a responsibility and we want to do it as a, as a team and to ensure that our team that was supporting the line was well taken care of. And many other things came along the line and we just didn't shy away to help. That's fantastic. We're talking with Anil David, the founder, chief evangelist at Agape Connecting People Private Limited. And you have a book called The Longest Shortcut. And, you know, your your story is one of, of making mistakes, of paying the price, of redemption. Uh, you know, when you were uh, serving your prison sentence, uh, the support that you said, the support that you received from your ex-employer, the prison authorities, family and friends was transformative. They helped you learn about uh, contact center skills. And then since you've been out, uh, as you have put together Agape Connecting People, you have also done the same, not only for ex-offenders, but for underprivileged people, physically challenged, single moms, people that are, you know, maybe somewhat on the fringes of society. And what, what has that, what has that journey done for you to come, to come back from paying your debt to now helping other people get through theirs? You know, I was at the darkest point in my life and I was serving time. And I saw counselors and prison officers doing three things that really caught my heart. And they were giving me time, attention and love. And that helped me. Uh, you know, there's this saying that says it takes a village to train a child, to raise a child. And I saw that happening in the prison and I began to learn a lot of skills there. 
And and as I was journeying again, the opportunity that I got to learn even in the prison, uh, the very thing that I learned that I'm now actually running a business, uh, both in the prison and outside prison, uh, it's something my way of giving back because I benefited uh, a lot of love, a lot of uh, opportunity from people. And it's the very natural of me to, to, to return this back. And the topic about the book, The Longer Shortcut, yeah, I've... I've taken too many shortcuts in life and every shortcut led to the wrong reasons and the title is going to inspire many people. Now, I never thought about in my imagination that I'll write a book. Uh, one day I had a, a friend of mine, a uh, very close friend of mine, introduced me to a gentleman. His name was Harish Kupchandani. He was the first guy who wrote something about me on LinkedIn. I didn't even have a LinkedIn account at that time. So I was very curious to know what exactly he wrote. And he wrote, it really caught my heart. I said, that's when the idea came to me and said that maybe someday I'll write something about my life to help people to go through all the pains and struggles that I went, that it could kind of take away some, some stuff from my learnings. And then next thing I knew that uh, I had this thought and, and my family, my kids and my, my friend Bart got together and said, they were, hey, why don't you write the book? Everything connected. And that's how the journey of writing the book took two years. It's an unsanitized book, not sanitized at all, telling all of my failings, but there's a story to be told on it. That was, it's a message of hope yeah, it's, and it's, possibilities. It's a great title, uh, Anil David, the, uh, the Longest Shortcut, because as you said yourself, your early life was about taking shortcuts. Uh, just to paraphrase some of the things you said as a child, you were a pathological liar. By the time you were 14, you had learned to steal. At 26, you were convicted of your first crime, taking clients' funds, sent to prison. Then even in your late 30s, um, I believe... You know, it's in the book that you stole close to 800000 in a bank fraud and that landed you in prison again. You also touch in the book, uh, you know, I won't go into detail here. There's, there's, there's some tragic stories of, of, of sexual abuse. And yet somehow through this longest shortcut, you overcame all of the setbacks in your family life, in your, in your professional life, if you like, a life of crime. What do you think? You mentioned the counsellors there that you spoke to in prison. What were the key moments in your life that turned the corner for you? I remember in the prison there was one particular gentleman. Uh, he was the, I would say, the employer uh, where I was working in the prison workshop and there was a particular officer. Uh, they both said something like this. They said that you have very good attitude. That was the first time I had an acknowledgement of somebody telling me about something about attitude. And I've seen over the years, uh, even the prison officers, they begin to spend some time and help me to come out of my cocoon, take off all of my shells, shed my skins. And, and there were many people, you know, week after week, begin to spend and, you know, for, for the longest time. And they were actually working and journey. I was, they were helping me to down, download all the wrong thought processes that I had and help me to upload. And then when I came out, I had the opportunity to meet many interesting people, in particularly strangers like Dr. Chan Yunlok, like a father to me for even until now, and my current CEO, Joseph C., who became a mentor and a friend. Being in a company of good people is very, very important. And these are the people who are the pillars that help me to overcome and stay focused in what I want to do. It's not alone. No, well, I mean, let's talk briefly about your company. You started the call center, I believe, with your wife in 2012. It employs yes. nearly 150 staff, half yes. of whom are, are, current, are serving time in prison, I believe, and the rest are ex-offenders. So just for the benefit of our listeners and viewers, this call center, half of the calls are manned by people who are currently in prison. The rest are ex-offenders, senior citizens, and other disadvantaged people. And on, on the top of that, you also run a call center, I believe, in the women's prison in Changi, which is just extraordinary is stuff. I mean, tell us a bit about that, how it came about and how it's going. The women call center was something that we were very passionate about. And, and, and working in a call center, as I have, uh, there are a lot of life learning skills that are very true. Uh, I learned to be patient when handling difficult customers. I learned to be to have perseverance by getting so many rejected customers who don't want to buy. Mm. So these are all. And then I had to learn about listening to a customer, sharing the difficulties, 
and I had to have be active listening. So these are all the life skills, and I envision that these are the skills that if we were to bring into the women's prison call center, they could be better people. And truly, for the last two and a, two years plus, we have seen girls being transformed, working back. We have seen them getting married, getting reconnected with their loved ones, their children, because of work is the most powerful way to bring dignity and redemption. It worked for me, and this is what we do. It's This is what we do. Each of them are very important to us, one life at a time, and we give them three things, our time, our attention, and our love. That will definitely help them to reach all their heart's desire, the dreams and vision that they have, and it's working for us. We're talking with Anil David, the founder and chief evangelist at Agape Connecting People, also the author of The Longest Shortcut. And you talk about those three elements, the time and, and et cetera, that you give, especially to the ex-offenders. Uh, when ex-offenders are coming out uh, after serving their sentence, what do you find is their greatest, uh, their, their greatest, most immediate need? Is it getting work? Is it getting back into a community somehow? What, what is the biggest challenge that they face? The biggest challenge is getting work uh, and also a work that will give them a career progression. Mm. You know, it's easy to get uh, any kind of job, but what we specialize is a job that was able to give them a career progression that they can can aspire to dream and look at themselves moving where they will not be judged by what are the, the past life, but they can be judged by the new attitude that they have. So job is the most important thing, job security, because with that, there can be bread on the table at home. There can be re- a reconciliation with the loved ones. You won't be a burden to others. You see. So job is very, very crucial. And on that point, uh, Anil, you've done a wonderful job yourself with this organization, changing, improving, hopefully, the public perception of ex-offenders in Singapore. Where do you think we're at now? In terms of that, how we look at, how we view, how we treat ex-offenders in Singapore. Is it improving? Obviously, there's probably still more work to be done. But day to day, where are we at with how we treat ex-offenders? I was in prison three times. There's an old prison that was different, that was not very inspired to uh, be involved in the individual's transformation. The new prison is very, very much interested, keen, and it has an intent to see them succeed. So when the yellow ribbon started, that was the in 2004. That's when the whole industry began to change because the government became to be an ambassador, an advocate. Today, ex-offenders are in a better marketplace. They will get an opportunity. And I always tell this to ex-offenders, the opportunities are lying right in front of you. The only way that you can succeed is keep investing in your attitude. Because attitude will keep opening doors for you. That's very important. Attitude. The marketplace is good. Uh, people are more approachable. People are more open. Employers are willing to hire you and give you a second chance. It is different. It is better now. People are more receptive today. And just to follow up on that, we've got some comments coming in live. Uh, Jason Dacey, send my best to Anil, a great guy. We have Anne Morgan listening in. She says, brilliant initiative, inspiring story. It is an inspiring story, Anil. I mean, what I know you're a very <laughs> modest guy and you're very humble and you're very quick to praise your team who all play a wonderful role, and that's true. But what do you feel when you hear such comments? You know, what an inspirational guy you are, the difference you're making. How do you feel about that and the impact you're having, positive impact you're having on Singapore society? When is the next Anil David going to rise and do the same? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's we did more. You know, uh, you know it's like just like you, Neil, you came from an, a foreign country and you make Singapore your home. You speak the, you travel the local train, buses, and, you know, all your shows that are here, you, you're just like now a very part of Singapore. <laughs> so we just need people to rise and, hey, everyone can make a difference. Yeah. Anil, how can people support you and can support uh, Agape Connecting People and, and support ex-offenders? What is the best way for ordinary people to get involved and to make a difference? I could just say, well, I have a heart's desire together with my CEO, Joseph, that we want to employ uh, almost up to a thousand people wow. and uh, we want to grow our business and uh, when we mean uh, we want to tell the listeners that 
the support that we provide, the service that we provide is is good or better. And don't do not feel that uh, just because we have a group of people may have a past background, but we have been developing now because we are also a skills future approved training organizations. Training is in our DNA. We've been developing people, developing attitudes so that they can perform and flourish in this industry wherever they go. Wonderful stuff. And Anil, just briefly, your new book, uh, The Longest Shortcut, which is a, a, an inspiring story about your journey to redemption. I believe it's out now and available at all bookstores. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Wonderful stuff. So if, you, if you're listening, guys, please do read The Longest Shortcut. It is a truly inspiring story about a man's redemption. It's great stuff. Anil by Thank Anil you. David. And Anil, Thank how can you. people contact you if they want to get in touch with Agape Connecting People? On our website, uh, get uh, agapecp.com. Uh, you can send in an email. I'm on LinkedIn at Anil David, all is available. Yep. Anil, thank you so much for your time today and for your inspiring story and the work you're doing to help others as well. Wonderful. Thank stuff. you. A true Singapore inspiration. Yeah. Thanks, Anil. Have a great thank day. You very-